Hi, welcome back to my channel. I'm Sarah and you're watching So Beauty Stuff. As you can see, I have with me today my lovely model Maraid. And we're going to do some demonstrations on how to do makeup on other people. So this is going to be not so much um, a makeup tutorial, more so on how to be a makeup artist, how to, um, where to put your hands, how to look after someone, what to do, what not to do, and to hopefully pick up some really good tips along the way. So I'll start by just showing you what my setup here is. I've just got a towel laid up here to protect the surface um, with some paper towels so that we can just put anything dirty on there. I've got my brushes laid out, all my makeup laid out here. And then Maraid is here in the makeup chair, which is a really good height because it's not going to hurt my back. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is just make sure that your client is comfortable. Are you comfortable with that, Maraid? Very comfortable, <laughs> thank you, Sierra. <laughs> okay, and so Maraid's got her hair down, so we're just going to ask if we can put these clips on her hair just to get it out of her face. Okay, so the next step is to ask them if they have anything already on their skin. So do you have anything on your skin now? Yes, I do. Okay, so we're going to have to do a bit of cleansing and toning. It's always good to do that first anyway. Um, and also to ask, do you have any allergies or anything that your skin is sensitive to? No, I don't. Great, okay. So I've washed my hands, but I'm also going to start by putting um, some antibacterial uh, wipe on my hands. And it's good to do this in front of your client as well, so they know that you're clean. <laughs> so I'm just going to start by putting some cleansing lotion on Marae's skin just to get any um, makeup that she already has on. So when you're doing anything like this on a client's face, obviously you want to be gentle, but don't go in too light-handed. And then I'm going to use um, some more cotton pads and some refreshing toner. So this will just uh, clear off any cleanser that's left on there and tone the skin, ready for makeup application. Okay, so now we need to um, put a base on there. So we want to put some moisturizer or a primer on. So you can apply moisturizers with a brush or with your hand. I always prefer to use my hand so I can warm it up a little bit before putting it on the skin mm -hmm. and just sort of almost massage it in. It is a bit uncomfortable sometimes when you first start t doing someone else's makeup or touching their face. It's quite an intimate thing, but that's what they're there for. They're expecting you to be there. Just make sure that they feel comfortable. <laughs> okay, so next I'm going to go in with a primer. Um, I tend to use the same brush for a primer that I would to apply um, foundation. So you can either squeeze it onto your hand, you have got clean hands, or you can use a palette, it's totally up to you. And so while I am making an effort to not block the camera today, I do try and stand to the side of my chair and walk around the outside rather than stand in front so you're not sort of looming over them and just to make your client feel a bit more comfortable. So before you do any foundation, it is a good idea to colour correct. Um, so if there are any areas on the face where there's blemishes or discoloration, you can do that before the foundation. That will neutralize the skin and then when you put the foundation on, it will make sure that it's all covered in one color. Maureen has a little bit of redness on her skin, so we're just mm. gonna use some green just to neutralize it before we put any foundation on. And depending on who your client is, it's always good to have a bit of conversation going. And if you are struggling with conversation, sometimes I just find I just talk about what I'm doing while I'm doing it and it just puts you both at ease. Okay, and then foundation's pretty much the same process. We're gonna put the foundation off the face using a brush and then blend it in with another brush. It's pretty straightforward. This sort of stage is very much similar to how you do your own makeup. Um, areas that it's always good to keep an eye on when you're doing foundation is make sure that you get it all around the bottom of the nose because if you can't, you're not sitting there looking up, um, just you wanna make sure you don't leave any uh, areas untouched and also to blend, remember to blend it down the neck and around the ears. Okay, so I've chosen a foundation color that I think matches Maraid's skin. Um, and so what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna ask her to look up and just a gentle touch on the chin just to let her know where she's going. Um, and I'm just gonna do a little line from her cheek down to her neck. And I'm gonna use my finger to blend it in and just see if that works. And you kinda want it to almost disappear so you can't see anything. And so that's a really nice match. And Marie doesn't fake tan or anything like that, so her skin's all the same colour, so we don't have to match to her chest or anything else, so this part of the colour's fine, so you can relax your head now. <laughs> so you use the same flat petal brush that I put the primer on with, and just start spreading out the foundation. So I've just done a thin layer all over Marie's face, and now I'm going to use a flat top kabuki, just to blend that all in. And so don't be afraid to scoop hair out the way, whatever you need to do. Um, they're there for you to give them perfect application, so don't let anything be imperfect because you're too nervous to, to move it or touch it. So to make sure I get under the nose, I'm just making sure my brush is rubbed there and making sure I'm rubbing down, not up, because we don't want bristles to go up her nose because that's going to be really uncomfortable. <laughs> and so if you ever need your client to move their face, you can get to a certain area, you can just use your finger to lightly guide, guide their face so they want to know where they can go and then you say, just relax your head now. And just make sure that you're telling them what you're doing, what you want them to do. All right, so next we're going to go on to concealer. 
So same sort of thing as with foundation, we're going to choose a color that we think matches and we can start with a small area if it's not quite right we can change. Um, normally with concealers I find it quite easy because you tend to go for the same shade as the foundation or maybe a little bit lighter. So we can use concealer obviously for the under eyes but also for any blemishes that are still showing through. And, <laughs> um, and again, with, so when you're doing the under eye concealer, because you don't want it to crease, you're going to ask them to look up. And then if you need to, you can just place, you can um, have a pad or another brush or anything like that. And you're just going to hold the cheek down so that you can get rid of any creasing and just blend it in. And you're just being really, really gentle because you're around that eye. And then you can let them know you can relax now. And so getting right in under the lower lash line can be quite a tricky spot. But just be really gentle, be really patient. Another tip is to also set expectations. Um, so for example, with blemishes, it's really easy to correct colour, but you can't do an awful lot when it comes to texture. So, so we're also going to prime the eyelids. So Ray, please could you shut your eyes? And if you need to as well, when it comes to eyelids, sometimes people have creases in their eyelids, it's perfectly normal. You can just place a thumb on the eyebrow and just gently lift it, just to taut the skin. So once I'm finished with the brushes I'm using, I'm just putting them in this tub here and rather than putting them back in my clean kit. So any brushes that I don't use, they're fine, but they're clean for next time. And anything that I do use, I will wash before I put back in because everything needs to be sanitary. And so if you do need to put a different product on your palette, um, what I do carry around with me is a brush cleaner and you can just spray it on there um, and use a tissue or a piece of kitchen roll and just wipe it off and then you're making sure that you're keeping it sanitary between the products as well. With things like eyeshadows and pressed powders, you can double dip with those and you can easily sanitize them. I'll link a video down below where I talked about sanitizing everything. Um, but with powders like this, it's really easy. You can just decant some onto your palette. Um, this powder will go everywhere um, and it will dust down and you can just dust it off. You can buy a cape or you can even tuck um, some paper towels in just around here just to protect their clothes. They look up for me. I'm just going to set the under eyes and just pushing that into the skin and gently pulling down on the cheek so that I make sure that there's no creasing. And then I'm going to use a denser brush and just push this into the rest of the skin. So I prefer to push this into the skin rather than brush it around in case I move things around because it's such a loose powder I really want to make sure that I'm pushing it into the skin making everything set. And a brush like this as well, if there is any mild creasing that's happened since you've applied, you can sort of blend that in while you're pushing it into the skin. So also dusting some lightly over the eyelids to set the uh, primer that we put on there. And then also if there's any excess powder on there, just uh, look up for me. I'm just going to dust off any excess. Okay, so we're just gonna finish off the rest of the face now. We're gonna do a little bit of light contour, some highlighting and some blush. Um, so when it comes to choosing colours for things like blush, you just need to think about their skin tone but also what colour maybe their outfit might be, depending on where they're going, what they're doing, um, what eyeshadow look you're going to do. But all tied together, I try to always have a similar sort of shade in the lip, the cheek and the eye. So when it comes to how to dress, I probably should have said this at the beginning, um, you know, so I have my hair tied back, especially if you've got long hair, you have your hair out of your face, out of the way you are working, um, avoid long dangly sleeves or big long cardigans, anything that's going to be sort of catching on your client or and on your products. Okay, so we're going to go on to brows now. Generally, just go with the shape that they have. With colour, I tend to go for a similar or a shade lighter than their hair colour. You can use gels, um, but you do have to remember to decant them out of the pot. I prefer to use uh, powders. I'm just going to brush the hairs to make sure that they're all pointing in the same direction. <laughs> And if you have got any product in there, that also helps to just even that out. I'm literally going to use really light brush strokes and just follow the shape of the brow there. And you can, of course, do a bit of um, shape correction if you need to. If I mean, nobody has symmetrical eyebrows. For example, if you're putting a bit more emphasis on an arch on one, that you do the same on the other one. And if you do get any fallout or powder on the face, you can just get a brush and dust it away. 
And you can use a brow setting gel. I do have one in my kit. So always remove the brush that comes with it. You pick up some product from within the tube, but that's it. We're not gonna double dip this one once we touch it on Moraine's face. And then throw this away. So for eyes, um, this is the time when obviously you're gonna ask them to keep their eyes shut. And just like we did when we were putting the um, eyeshadow primer on, you may need to just put a thumb here above the eye eyebrow and literally just pull it very slightly just to taut the lid. And if you're wanting to get down to the lash line, again, just uh, I always use just my baby finger just to rest on the face to help me get some steady hand movements in there and just raise the eyebrow to keep it all taut. And that's the same if you were doing eyeliner. Obviously, you can get in a bit closer as well. Okay, so then if you want to do under the lower lash line, I'm just going to ask Marie to look up for me. And you can keep your head facing, just look up with your eyes. And then I'm going to just place a finger on the cheek just to pull down any skin that's there so that I can get under her under eye. So for the inner corner, I tend to say, could you shut your eyes? Um, so I can just get right in the inner corner there without any risk of poking in the eye. So next is mascara and this can be quite daunting when you're putting mascara on someone else and you just have to make sure you're relaxed, they're relaxed and just remember even if you do smudge it you can fix it, it's fine, it's just makeup. So again with mascara we're not going to use the wand that comes with it, we're going to use a disposable and what I like to do is bend the tip so that it's at a right angle. You can do this after you put it in the pot unlike what I've just done. And then my advice is to put this down because you don't want to double dip so just take away the temptation. What I like to do is place my thumb on the eyelid, so my thumb is almost going to be a guard on her eyelid and I'm just going to get you, Marie to just look forward and you can blink if you need to, it's absolutely fine. And I'm just going to get as close as I can, because it's bent I can get a little bit closer and just to start at the roots and wiggle it through to the tip. And so I have got one little splodge there on the eyelid, take a cotton bud and just dab it away and 9 times out of 10, that's fine, it's gone, you can't even see it. Okay, and then we're just going to give that a couple of seconds to dry because we don't then want the the mascara to smudge everywhere <laughs> and then just look up a little bit at this sort of angle and I'm going to do your lower lashes so just pull down a little bit and just sweep it across the lower lashes. I'm doing all of this from the one application of the mascara. If you do need to go in for more then you need to get a fresh brush. So I've just brought you a little bit closer which I probably should have done a bit earlier on but we're just going to now finish on the lips. So we can start with a lip liner if you want to um, with pencils it's quite easy so long as you sharpen it in between uses with a disinfected sharpener. So this is a brand new pencil that I've never used before but still I'm going to just um, sharpen the tip just to make sure that it's nice and clean, that there's nothing on the surface of the pencil that's going to touch Marie's face. So with lips, generally you can just ask them to relax their lips. I tend to just say just turn your face to me and then we're just going to draw the outline. So Marade's lips, especially now I've put the liner on, you can see this side, this top lip here is slightly fuller than this one. So we're just going to slightly overdraw the right side just to even that out. I'm just doing it really gradually so I don't end up with an overdrawn, really overdrawn one side just to keep, keep it even and gradually do it because it's so very slight. Now I'm not going to fill the whole lip but I'm just going to colour it in slightly around the edges. That will help give a slight ombre effect when we put the lip colour on. So I'm now just going to sharpen it again, even though I will do it next time, and then I will put this um, sharpener in with my used brushes to clean. Okay, so depending what lip product you're using, if you're using anything that comes in a tube, again, make sure you're decanting that, putting it onto a pot. Um, I prefer using either mixes like this, which you can squeeze out, or a palette like this one um, is really ideal because you can just scrape up the colour that you want, mix it up. And so I actually like to use a brush like this. This is actually an eyeliner brush. And just like you did with the um, foundation, you can just put a little bit on and make sure that it's the colour that you're after. And the great thing about using a brush like this is you can be really, really defined. You can get right into the corners and make a really smooth line. If you do make any mistakes, you can literally just clean it up with a cotton tip. If I'm using a gloss, um, so something that's in a tube, I will show you how I get that out. And so you can do two things. You can dip this in once and then use that. Or if you think you might need to get more than one application, you can use the wand to just wipe some out on the clean palette. And then you can literally use this 
put it on the lips. And gloss is a really nice way of making a colour look a bit more natural. And so this is the stage where I would normally give my client the mirror and just ask them to give themselves mm -hmm. a quick check over, see if there's anything that they really don't like or they want to change. Yeah, that looks really cool, thank you. Very cool. Cool. So now what we're going to do is we're going to set the face. So I use two sprays and I always explain to my clients what these are for. So the Fix Plus is mineral and that's going to help keep you hydrated, stop mm -hmm. it going cakey. And the L'Oreal Fixing Mist is basically hairspray for your face. It's just going to hold everything in place. Just shut your eyes, relax. The spray is coming in three, two, one. And so I always do the first spray just next to their face so it's not a sudden spritz. Just shut your eyes for me. The spray is coming in three, two, one. And then we're going to fan and remove the clips. And you're finished. Yay. Here you go. <laughs> that looks really cool. Okay, so I hope you picked up some tips there. I hope you were able to uh, find out some ways of how to treat your client when they're sitting in your chair, how to apply their makeup, um, questions to ask, things to do. Um, if you've got any other tips, I'd really love to hear them. You can ch check them down in the comments. Um, what your favorite tip was as well, I'd like to hear about that. And hopefully you can subscribe to my channel. It's free to do it. It means you won't miss any of my videos. Mm -hmm. And I'll see you in my next one. Bye. Ha <laughs> ha